Hello everyone. Hope everyone has joined this session. Uh, there are sufficient members in this session, so let's begin this session. In this session, we'll be discussing how to diagnose one of the most common spinal cord tumor, the spinal cord ependymomas. So, how to diagnose spinal cord ependymoma? I'm Dr. Kalyan Bumakanti, senior consultant neurosurgeon. Aveer Glenigal's Global Hospital, Hyderabad. So as you all know, ependymoma is a very common tumor of the spinal cord. I will try to explain you how we spinal cord ependymoma diagnosed. This video is mainly intended for non-medical persons who are either patients or their relatives and are looking to know how is ependymoma diagnosed with radiology. So, at the instance, MRI is the MR imaging, magnetic resonance imaging is the preferred method for evaluation of the spinal cord ependymoma. Why? Why is MRI the preferred method? Because of its ability to provide detailed imaging of the soft tissues. That is, you will have very clear image of the humor, the spinal cord and its relation to the other soft tissues like the muscles and the lamina. First, you, you need to know the exact tumor location. The spinal cord ependymomas usually arise from the ependymal cells lying the central, lining the central canal of the spinal cord. You can see this picture. This is outside the spinal cord. This is known as the extramedullary tumor. The tumor is ar arising outside the spinal cord and it is compressing the spinal cord. But this is an intramedullary tumor. Ependymomas are intramedullary tumors. They arise from within the spinal cord. They cause bulging of the spinal cord. You can see here there is bulging of the spinal cord and the tumor is present within the spinal cord. And they are most commonly found in the cervical and thoracic regions of the spinal cord. Tumor appearance. This is MRI. As I have told, the tumors are intramedullary lesions on the spinal cord. And the spinal cord ependymomas are typically appear as well defined. You can see this picture. The tumor is well defined. You can easy, very clearly appreciate the margins of the tumor in the sagittal cuts, axial cuts and the coronal cuts. So they have a characteristic appearance of a well cir circumscribed mass that is iso intense or hypo intense on T1 weighted images and hyper intense on T2 weighted images. And how do they enhance? As you all know, contrast images, post contrast images are very important for the diagnosis of spinal cord and brain tumors. So, the spinal cord ependymomas often show heterogeneous enhancement with contrast administration on post-contrast MRI images. What, what does this mean? This means that some parts of the tumor may take up contrast more than the others, which can help in differentiating it from other types of spinal cord tumors. Can this see this picture? This is all the tumor but some of the tumor is non-enhancing. This part of the tumor is not enhancing, whereas this part of the tumor is enhancing. This means there is heterogeneous enhancement, enhancement of the tumor. There are other imaging features which help in differentiating from other spinal cord tumors. These are these other imaging features are MR, on MRI such as cystic areas within the tumor. This particular area, the tumor has a cystic area. You can see this over here. Sometimes calcifications and sometimes peritumor, uh, many a times, peritumoral edema is seen. You can see this. This entire one is the peritumoral edema. And this peritumoral edema and the tumor, together they cause swelling of the spinal cord. You can see swelling of the spinal cord over here. And this is again the peritumoral edema. 
These features can provide additional information for diagnosis and most important, they provide information for planning of surgery. In conclusion, the MRI plays a very crucial role in evaluating spinal cord ependymomas. The MRI imaging features, including tumor location, the appearance, enhancement pattern, can aid in the diagnosis and treatment planning of this condition. But the final and definitive diagnosis is done by microscopic examination of the tumor, which we'll be dealing in our next session. You can go through these references and, as a, and always consult a medical personnel before embarking on any kind of treatment.